Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with PDQ.com. It's past Tuesday again. It's the first of uh, 2022. We're going to kind of dive in and see how, how we how we compare to uh, last year. Uh, so overall, we have 96 vulnerabilities that got patched, which for 2021, that would be high. January in general, that's quite a few. Uh, but if we go back two years to 2020, that's about uh, average, maybe a little bit low. So Hopefully this is just kind of an outlier where we've got to see a spike and we uh, go back to our lower numbers after this one. Uh, and the more negative side, nine critical exploits. One of those is wormable, which is always great to hear. And then six of these are already known out in the wild. Uh, the only saving grace is none of those have been reported as being actively exploited yet, which means, well, there's a lot of highly exploitable things and a lot of things that are already known to the community Nothing's been exploited yet, so dive in and get patched. Keep your system as uh, safe as possible. First we're going to go over is this uh, CVE-2022-21907, and this is the HTTP protocol stack. It's a remote exchange uh, executable. This is a 9.8 out of 10, and this is the one that is wormable, which means it's on the network for the attack vector. There's no privileges required, and it does not require any user interaction. Uh, the one, I mean... Saving Grace seems kind of strong because it's still bad, is it uses HTTP trailer support, which is not enabled by default. Uh, so you can check your systems to see if you are at risk. I mean, patch either way, get it done. But if you want to see if you have systems that were at risk and you need to maybe do a dive in to see if anything's been going on there, it's going to be local machine, current control set, HTTP parameters, and you're looking for this one here, enable trailer support with the D word of one, and make sure you get all those zeros as well. If you find that uh, registry key in there, that means those systems are at risk and you definitely want to get that patched as soon as possible. Uh, either way, you definitely want to patch. You don't want to leave anything like that open. Uh, the next we're going to go into is the other 9.8, which is uh, CVE 2022-21849. Uh, this one uses the Windows IKE extension. It's also remote. In fact, looking at... Uh, at the wormable one, this one has all the same issues. It looks like it could be just as bad where the attack vectors network, no privileges required, no user interaction. All that sounds just as bad, but it got labeled as important over critical. Uh, and I think the reason is because you have to be able to use the, the IPSEC service has to be running, which I think limits the amount of machines that I've exposed to this one. So the, the exploit is still really bad, but it's, st it's listed as less likely to be exploited just because it requires a very certain service to be running on the machines. Uh, but it's definitely, if you are using IPSEC, then maybe it's only important to Microsoft, but it's critical to you. You want to get that passed as soon as possible. And the last one we're going to go over is the uh, Active Directory Domain Services, uh, Elevation of Privilege. Usually when it's Elevation of Privilege, it's only listed as important, and this one's listed as critical. I didn't see anything in there as to why this one would be a higher rating. Uh, but I just thought that was noteworthy and maybe it's worth talking about. And basically, this is one where they have to have minimum permissions to be able to run this, which means they're either internal and already have some sort of account or they use something else to gain a foothold. And then they can use this after they have that foothold to expand their permission level, their privileges, and uh, start to do some real damage there. And the way they do this is it's, uh, I already forget this one, the Active Directory, I believe, Trust. I'm going to read my notes here instead of just guessing. The Active Directory, yep, trust boundary. They use that to elevate it. So this is one where if they have access to your system, this makes it a lot easier for them to get extra access and cause a lot more damage. If they don't have access, it doesn't do them any good. Uh, so other than that, I think that's kind of the three that I wanted to highlight. There's some really bad ones in there. There's some ones that have interesting uh, critical designations, or in, I just don't understand why severity be important on a 9.8. Uh, but who, who am I to question? They've been doing this longer than I have. Anyway, as I said, it's important to get your system patched as soon as possible. Uh, that includes you know, once they come in, download, test it, put it in your lab environment, make sure there's no issues, and then get it updated to production. That can be a lot of time. It uh, eats away at all your free time. Uh, there's a couple products out there. I recommend PDQ Deploy and Inventory with that. You can have it set to auto-download, auto-deploy to your test environment after a certain amount of time, which you can define. It will deploy it to the rest of your environment. So it just automates the entire process without you having to be so, so hands-on. I think it will uh, get you a lot of valuable time with. So you can do things like watch awesome YouTube videos starring Jordan with PDQ.com.